Hi everyone, it's Katrina. Number 10, the Newgrange Tomb. The Newgrange Tomb was built 5,000 years ago by a mysterious civilization that even today we know very little about. It's a Neolithic structure in Ireland that can still be used for celebrating the winter solstice all these thousands of years later. Every year on December 21st, the shortest day of the year, sunlight beams through the main corridor that leads into the chamber of the tomb, flooding 60 feet of stone passage in warm yellow light. Clearly, the people who built the tomb knew what they were doing. Above the structure itself, which is tucked inside a grassy mound, there is a small roof aligned perfectly with the rising sun. Additionally, the central mound is surrounded by 97 stones carved into pieces of megalithic artwork. It's just as striking as the more widely known Stonehenge, but older by several centuries. It probably had a very similar, if not the same, purpose as Stonehenge across the water in England. It was used for spiritual and religious ceremonies, all having to do with the different times of the year and the seasons. We just don't know what those ceremonies looked like. We also don't know much about the ancient people who built it, other than that they were likely a farming community who somehow taught themselves the secrets of the stars. Number 9. Sigiriya Sigiriya is the most fascinating magical place in all of Sri Lanka. It's an ancient fortress built atop a huge pillar of rock, overlooking endless miles of forest in every direction. It's also known as Lion's Rock and was once home to a great palace over 600 feet in the air. The only way to the top of the rock is by climbing a great stairway. The stairway starts on the ground, its entranceway jammed between a pair of huge stone lion paws. Archaeologists believe there was a huge lion statue here once, even bigger than the Sphinx in Egypt, but it has since vanished. All that's left are the toes of the feet. The palace at the top was built in the Middle Ages during the Datusena dynasty, but the rock was being used way before that, all the way back in the 3rd century BC by Buddhist monks. They used Sigiriya as a place of meditation. It was considered holy, a great place of spiritual magic that attracted Buddhists from all over the country, even from India. The palace and fortress were used up until the year 495. That was when King Kasapa I was defeated and Sigiriya was handed back to the Buddhist monks. Shortly after, the Buddhist cult known as Sangha opened one of their most important churches here. Number 8. Egyptian Priest of Magic Archaeologists in Egypt have just discovered the tomb of an Egyptian priest, revealed to be a priest dedicated to magic from 4,500 years ago. The mysterious tomb was uncovered at Abu Sir Archaeological Cemetery in Giza, sealed from the world until its recent discovery. The tomb belonged to someone named Shepseskaf Ankh, who was both a priest and a magician. The tomb was discovered to be enormous, 45 feet long and 13 feet high. The sheer size of the tomb shows just how important this man had been in life during the fifth dynasty of the Old Kingdom. By translating the hieroglyphics on the sealed door of his tomb, experts learned his many titles. He was called Priest of Kunum, Priest of Magic, and was also an important royal physician. If you were able to practice magic in ancient Egypt, you were also able to tend to the medical necessities of royalty. After all, magic and medicine weren't that far apart. If you knew how to heal the body, you were capable of wondrous things. The tomb itself was found in a necropolis between Giza and Saqqara. Even this long ago, Giza had become just too full of monuments. There was no more space to be building pyramids and complex underground tombs. So the builders started straying further and further away, to the lost city of Saqqara. But by now you probably want to know how this man was so magical. How could he be a physician and a wielder of magic at the same time? The truth is that in ancient Egypt, these things were one and the same. Physicians had many different techniques to heal people, and a lot of them had to do with magic. They would speak to the gods, banish curses, mix concoctions out of herbs, whatever they needed to appear effective. The reality is that he probably didn't possess any actual supernatural powers. He probably knew a lot about medicine and combined his scientific knowledge with as much spiritual showmanship as possible. What do you think? Tell me your thoughts in the comments. Number 7. The Karnak Stones the Karnak Stones is another prehistoric place of magic built by an enigmatic civilization in Europe. These megalithic stones can be found today near the village of Karnak in France. The stones show that whoever built them had an advanced knowledge of geometry, 
and according to what we know today, this knowledge seems way too advanced for prehistoric people over 5,300 years ago. Experts believe the stones were erected by a group of humans who came even before the Celts. Yet why they bothered putting up over 3,000 standing stones, a task that would have taken years to complete, is a major mystery. Scientists and scholars alike have been trying to decode the Karnak stones with very little success. And to make things even more difficult, many of the stones have vanished. This is due in large part to the site having been generally neglected and even taken over in some areas by sheep. Since the stones have been sitting around for so long, it's likely people stole them to build other projects or if they've just been mostly buried by dirt. What we do know is that the Karnak stones are the biggest collection of megalithic standing stones anywhere on the planet. The entire place was likely treated as a magical center where the community elders taught astrology and astronomy which were probably one back in those days. Some experts believe it's possible the stones were erected in imitation of the stars above, made to mimic constellations in the sky. Number 6. The Garden of Eden In 1994, a shepherd in eastern Turkey accidentally discovered what very well could be the legendary Garden of Eden. To this day, his accidental discovery of a group of standing stones is considered by some to be the greatest in archaeological history. The site that he found was soon excavated by the famous German archaeologist Klaus Schmidt and is known today as Gobekli Tepe, one of the oldest known archaeological sites anywhere in the world. It's mysterious for a lot of reasons, but mostly its age. Gobekli Tepe is estimated at around 13,000 years old built 7,000 years before Stonehenge and 6,500 years before the pyramids in Giza. Not only is it older than every other major site in the world, it's older by a tremendous margin. This was a time when cavemen were the dominant force and culture. People were still very primitive. It seems ridiculous that they could have built a grand city out of stone when, as far as we know, even language or communication was limited. And yet there is no denying the results of the carbon dating. But here's where things get more magical. There are some who believe Gobekli Tepe was the infamous Garden of Eden spoken of in the Bible. Researchers have discovered inscriptions of boars, ducks, crayfish, lions, and even serpents. Clearly, what is now a barren desert was once flourishing with life. And because the site is so old, it almost seems as if the only way it could have been built on Earth was if God, or the gods, came down and built it themselves for humans to enjoy. Number 5. The Enchanted River Deep in the jungles of the Philippines, there is a mystical stretch of river that comes out of virtually nowhere and sends its water flowing into the sea. It's called the Hinatuan Enchanted River, located in Mindanao. The saltwater river is 80 feet deep in some parts and hardly long enough to even be considered a river. Yet it has been seen as a place of miracles since antiquity. Because the river looks as though it comes out of the ground and has no visible source, the ancient people who lived here believed it was magical in origin. Even modern scientists don't know exactly where the salt water comes from. Most theories say there is an underground cave system that shoots the river literally out of the earth, but this has never been confirmed. What makes it even more mysterious is that the river is totally clear, much like a freshwater spring would be. The river was never said to have any particular magic, Instead, there are a lot of elaborate legends surrounding it. Locals say fairies once dumped sapphires and jade pieces into the water, turning it shades of blue and green. They also say the river is home to a magical fish that nobody can catch. And now for number four. But first, want to give a big shout out to Diane Suisso and Danny Green KP. Thanks so much for watching and supporting Origins Explained. If you are new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button and join the Origins Explained family. Number 4. Sweden's Island of Witches These days, the Swedish island of Bladjungfrun is a national park, but many years ago it was believed to be a terrifying place of horrors where witches allegedly practiced evil magic. According to some archaeological discoveries made in the past few years, this might actually be true. The island itself is in the Baltic Sea, nothing but a small chunk of blue granite less than a mile long. It's been an ominous place for as far back as the local folklore goes. Its original name was Blakula. However, locals refused to say it because they believed as soon as you said the island's name, it would create a series of storms that could wipe out ships. 
In the 16th century, witches were said to gather on the island the day before Good Friday to meet the devil. As if that wasn't bad enough, the rest of the year, the island was home to female supernatural beings. These beings had the power to harm or help. Some people would secretly travel to the island and leave offerings on its shores in a desperate attempt to gain favor with the mysterious beings. But some people wanted the beings to use their power to cause others harm. The evidence of this is in the form of a labyrinth. The ruins of a strange stone labyrinth can still be found on the island today. No one knows where it came from or who built it, and nobody knows what its purpose was. But the locals suspect it was somehow connected to the witches and their nefarious deeds. Number 3. Mayong The ancient village of Mayong was once the black magic capital of India. The quiet village sits on the edge of the Brahmaputra River and looks like any other village in the region. But its origin goes back to the days of ancient Assam. It's mentioned in the mythological epic the Mahabharata, a religious text that tells the story of some of Hinduism's gods and goddesses and an epic battle amongst heroes and gods alike. It's a book filled with stories and legends that live on to this day. In the book, the village of Mayong is where Chief Gatot Kacha received magical powers. From this ancient story, myths around the villages began to form. Even in modern times, locals believe witches live in the dense jungles outside the village and continue to practice black magic. There are other suspicious activities that have happened in the city as well. The villagers can tell you countless stories of men vanishing into thin air, people turning into wild beasts, and even one instance of a witch making an entire group of over 100,000 horsemen disappear. Naturally, there is no proof of these wild tales. But for over a thousand years, Mayong has been seen as a dark and magical place in India, somewhere most locals apparently avoid. Number 2. Mount Olympus We have all undoubtedly heard of Mount Olympus, the heavenly home of all the most important Greek gods in the classical pantheon. Zeus reigned over Mount Olympus, accompanied by his wife Hera, his brother Poseidon, his sisters, his children, and all the Olympians from mythology. Have you ever wondered where Mount Olympus actually is? And for that matter, is it really a place of magic? There are several peaks in Greece, Turkey, and Cyprus, all named Olympus. But the one with the most credibility is near the city of Thessaloniki in the north of Greece, the tallest mountain range in the whole country. The highest peak here is 9,570 feet tall. Since before the days of Christianity, the mountain has been considered sacred. It was once believed to exude spiritual power. It was so famous that it drew hermits and monks from all over Europe to live in its caves and forests. It wasn't until the coming of Christianity when people stopped visiting the holy mountain. These days, the only magic left on Olympus is its natural splendor. There are very few pilgrims. The forests are quiet, and people have given up believing in Zeus and his kin. Number 1. Black Magic Worship Historians discovered an underground worship chamber used in magical pagan ceremonies 40 feet beneath an old Roman ruin. It was built by a mysterious cult who painted the walls of the chamber an eerie blood red. The chamber dates back at least 2,000 years and is located beneath the streets of Rome. It was uncovered by accident in 1917 during the construction of a new railway line on the outskirts of the city. An underground passageway collapsed, revealing the entrance to the secret chamber. Its walls were found covered in pictures of gods and heroes from classical mythology, such as Achilles and Hercules. At the entrance is the imposing and gruesome head of Medusa, as well as carvings of centaurs and satyrs. It predates Christianity and is so far the only one of its kind ever found. This is one of the most bizarre magical places in Rome, a pagan basilica built underground. In the first century BC, historians believe it was used as a school for mystical teachings based on the philosophical writings of Pythagoras and Plato. It was likely built by an influential Roman family headed by Titus Statilius Taurus. This man was investigated by the Senate for practicing black magic and conducting secret illicit ceremonies underground. He never went to trial because he was found dead shortly after the accusations in the year 53. After that, his fellow cultists had to go even deeper underground. The basilica was sealed, forgotten, and buried under the streets of Rome. Thanks for watching. Which of these magical places sounds most likely to contain actual magic? Let me know in the comments below, and remember to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. See you next time for more incredible archaeological videos. Bye!